Hmm. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Just making sure my camera is adjusted properly. I'm telling you, I already did this once and it turned it on and it's not where it should be again. Okay, let me see. And I just have the tiniest of window that I can see. Right. I think that's good. Whoops. Every time I seize my face, it wants to move. Welcome everyone. Here we are at Die Day. And if anybody, some one single person wants to open up their microphone and tell me if I'm in a good position, I'd appreciate that. Um, if you could see both good. pots. Yeah, it's looks good. good. Okay, great. Thank you so much. So today we didn't know what we were going to do. And I decided to have an improv show. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, proffer to you a challenge this week too. I'm not going to do this challenge, but I want you to. I want you to combine two formulas. So it's going to be a combination of two formula challenge. Um, and it can come from anywhere um, on the welcome mat or articles I've written or ones you've made up yourself. And I'd like you to tell us the formulas and then dye them both together on the same piece of wool. And let's see what we come up with, because that's something that they always do in improv shows. Um, I also forgot to welcome you. So welcome, you, welcome to WandaWorks. And this week, our sponsor is Catherine. And she's um, given a donation to keep this all ticking along. And I'm super appreciative of that. Um, if you want to do the same, it's easy to do on the main page of the welcome mat. I have a button, you can just press it. So as you know, I'm using Magic Carpet Dyes. That's my dye company. Um, and all the backup for this is on the welcome mat. So everything that I have, I'm going to do, the formulas are all written out there. You can see the results. And I often add lots of extra stuff that pertain to what it is I'm doing today. And what I want to do today is talk about the way I personally make formulas. And I've done this for many years. I don't even know how many for Rug Cookie Magazine. Um, probably 15 years I did it or 16 years. And I have a little way I do it. And it's not the way you might think it is. So I like to start with an idea or a theme and then I like to move ahead from there. So for me today, I'm just going to um, not have any specific theme, but just sort of tell you and, and invent things here right on the fly. So the first thing we wanna say is, I start with an idea and then I give it a title. So my first uh, recipe is called Granny's Poor Health Panties. Um, and then I decide what value will it be? How bright or dull will it be? And then I decide kind of what color angle I'm kind of going towards. So I might do this very differently than other people, but I have to say my results are very, very good. I don't end up making things that look like what everybody else makes. And I can tell you that can get really monotonous. If you ever go to a rug show and everybody's rugs all look the same, it's because everybody's using the same formula sources. And when you can make your own, you've suddenly become incredibly powerful because your work is doubly yours then. It's um, what you've drawn, it's what you've dyed, and then what you've applied. It's like amazing. I guess that's triple. That's a triple whammy. All right, so let's think about Granny's poor health panties. Hmm. Well, I think they should be kind of light. You know, every good granny wears white panties, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I think they should be a little dull and dirty looking. And I'd like if they were greenish. Um, so let's start with one 256 of bottle green. Now, I don't like using <clears throat> the measuring um, tools that are, you know, these infinitesimal measurements. I like using a toothpick and it seems wildly inaccurate, but every time I've ever tested it, it isn't. So I have dipped my toothpick, which is marked with a half inch, which is what 256 is. And it's gotten damp um, because the water's hot, it just dried out again. This toothpick is dry as can be, because it's very dry here in the studio right now at this time of year from winter. So now it's not dripping, but it's damp. And I'm gonna stick it into my um, bottle green. So I'm gonna make Granny's panties over here in this, in this um, <laughs> dye bath. And I just have a regular dye bath. It's just water. It has a little bit of Sensopol in it because um, I made a bit of a tactical error today. And um, I put, um, I forgot to put my water in my containers first. I just had to get the water from my um, 
sink. So that's why there's centerpole because I already had centerpole in it, but it makes no difference. So there's my bottle green put in there. Um, then I'm gonna put the same amount of reddish brown. And always like I, when I do these demonstrations, I like to dye over a quarter yard. And one of the reasons is, you know, I need to sell this wool. And so any smaller than that, um, it's, you know, hard to sell. So now the same amount of reddish brown. And then I'm going to get the same amount of moss. Now I could, if I wanted to have inserted the wool when I put the first dye in and then poured the other dyes over, which would have given an interesting uh, <clears throat> stained effect for Granny's panties. But I'm just gonna let this be a solid color. There's so many things we can do when we're dying and so many variances we can make. It's fun to play with what happens when we change the way we do things. That's gonna be darn near impossible for you to see this, these colors in this dye pot because um, if they're very light, but I'm just gonna take it out and you can sort of see how light they are. I might feel like doubling that, but we'll see how Granny's panties look. And I might wanna add something. When you're making a formula, you can't always, you know, maybe you can't always comprehend exactly what um, actual uh, value something's gonna come out as. Once you get more experience, you can. And um, I'm not gonna stir this too much because I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit mottled and a little bit stained. And, you know, her illness wasn't that severe, I don't think, because it's kind of an interesting, beautiful color. Um, I'm always looking for these interesting lights because we need them so much in our work. So let's move on to our next color, which is called Mustard of My Dreams. And I want it to be kind of medium. I want it to be bright and I want it to be goldy green. So I'm gonna start with 1 64th of um, chocolate brown. <clears throat> of course, medium can have a range over three values or so. So it's gonna be kind of a lighter medium, I think. All right, chocolate brown, here we go, 1 64th. Um, I think I've told you this before, but it, it's okay for me to repeat it. So some dyes of mine and all dyes, some are like cake mix where they sort of have a sticking together property. And when I measure those dyes, I always rub them up the side of my jar to level them out. Um, and you wanna make sure you have spoons that are conducive to that because some spoons add a whole bunch on and a little lip here. And that's not so great. You don't want that. Um, but some of the dyes, and this goes for all dye companies, are granular, more like sugar or salt. Um, and though you can't do that measuring with those dyes. And so don't even try because they're just like dealing with, um, you know, all these M&Ms. <laughs> so 164 chocolate brown, 164th orange, which doesn't seem like I'm getting towards uh, mustard the way I'm thinking of it. But then I'm gonna add the real next color, the interesting color, which again is gonna be moss. Let me see what this looks like. It's often that I'll do this and I might wanna double it again. And that's okay because you have it written down what you're gonna do when you do this and you can just easily double it. So there's a little bit more moss gonna go in here than I want but that's okay, because I had the back of the spoon was a little bit wet. All right, let's see what this guy looks like. So that's a pretty beautiful um, uh, golden color, I think, mustard. Let's pop her in some wool and that's how we tell. Granny's panties is looking pretty good too. A lot of my formula making happens up here. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stir this one a little bit. I <clears throat> wanna have an adventure as I've told you many times, um, but I'm dying in a different way than you are because you might be dying for a certain color or a certain project. But really I have to tell you the same thing applies that you think about what value it needs to be, 
um, you know, that's really important. And in order to know that, you absolutely need to know uh, what your dyes look like inside those jars. And if you don't know that, you will be trying to get something dark out of a light dye without knowing how much, or you will be trying to get something light out of a dark dye. And that's also very frustrating. So if you know what's inside your jar, then you can proceed with this um, more logical approach. And we were talking about that a little bit yesterday in our, our Zoom, how when we wanna be an artist, we can be like sort of ethereal about it, or we can be like wishful about it, or we can be logical and concrete and take steps towards it. And I am in that bent. I like sort of when everything's all rolled up into one ball, but nothing ever happens if we don't take steps towards doing things. And that's really important to remember. Um, so I think Granny's panties are probably almost done, but I need to um, put some acid in there and you'll be happy to know I have my acid today. I have two, not, not one tray. I have two trays um, really firing on all cylinders today. So I'm gonna just take the smallest amount of acid possible. It's just a little pinch and put it in here with granny's panties. Um, Cause there's very little dye in here. And when there's very little dye, we need very little acid. I'm gonna start around a teensy bit now because I can tell you the water's probably clear. Now this is a very subtle um, panty situation. Now if I wanted to make it like grandpa's drawers, I might, double or even triple my amount, but you know, delicate granny. So here's what it looks like. And I'm, I'm well pleased with how that looks. You guys probably on camera can't even tell the difference between white or natural wool in this, but there's a definite difference and I'll be putting it with some natural wool so you can see it when I take a photo. I'm, I'm really pleased with that color. The ability to make these interesting lights, I'm telling you, it's a rare um, skill indeed. And I know you can do it. We can't buy wool like this, and so we must dye it. So my next color is called Spokesperson for Donald. Um, it's gonna be medium, it's gonna be bright, and I want it to be orangish, orange-ish, what a surprise. So this time I'm gonna use 1 16th of orange. You know orange is the color of buffoonery, right? 1 16th of orange. Um, do, do. It was laying down on the job and therefore invisible. So one stick 16th of orange, put it in there. And then I'm going to add, because it's so embarrassing being some people's um, spoke person, I'm gonna put some red violet in there because you know, for embarrassment's sake, you know, blushing. So sometimes when I'm making these things, I like to have a little bit of fun making the color, um, so that's all good too. So that's why I chose to put, um, why I chose to put uh, red violet in it. But the red violet is much less, it's half the amount. So this mustard is a very, very subtle color. Um, you wouldn't even want to call it mustard. It, it maybe looked like what you thought granny's drawers might look like. And that's okay if, if we want to, I'm just gonna turn this down a titch. If we want to, we can continue to add that until, add things to it until it looks the way we want it to. Um, but I like having these weird, because you might have known already from our previous dye shows. I like to have these weird, unusual colors in my collection because invariably somebody comes along and they need something just like that, especially if they're making something um, real. You know, they're doing a realistic thing. So this is a beautiful color also, even, even despite its namesake. So red violet is quite a strong color. It's twice the strength. So in, in reality, those dye amounts are about equal to one another. So I'm getting a direct, um, half and half situation here. So I hold it up so you can see it, but it's quite lovely. All right, 
let's take a look at these, uh, this mustard of my dreams. Maybe I don't like mustard, so that's why it's so insipid. Okay, it needs a little bit of acid added to it. And it needs to be turned up because remember I turned it way down. I really want to encourage people to make formulas. When you can do that, you just have a super strong tiger by the tail. Um, when you're following what somebody else did, and even if it's just a starting point, you can um, make something quite reminiscent to what the other person did, but it depends how, how you deviate. So I have a super great um, article that I'm gonna put to this class here where I take people on a little adventure, like we'll start with two colors and we'll have them in this amount each and then we'll switch. And I show the results of all of this and I go on quite a trip um, through maybe 20 or 25 different colors and they're all really great colors. So it's good to know that um, we can do these kinds of things. I also wanna talk a little bit today about stash building, which I'll also add to today's class. I have an article on that too, because we need to um, make a bit of an, of an investment when we wanna be making our own artwork. Um, and that's an investment in wool, an investment in dyes and what have you. So that you can just dye these quarter yards and have all these different varieties of colors. Like you've seen me dye over all these weeks and sometimes I'm making, well, look at right in these two pots here. One's like this and one's like this. And we have need of all of these things. Um, and we need to have all the color families too. I talk about that at great length. You can't just say if you love blues and purples, just have all blues and purples because when you go, or an all in the medium value, because when you go to make something, nothing will show up from each other. And those colors that you love, need the colors you don't like so much to make them invigorated and beautiful. So I'll add the stash building too to this, um, to this um, Friday dye date write up. So because this has more dye in it, I'm going to add like two thirty seconds or one sixteenth of acid to this. I'm going to turn it up a little bit too because um, it's also down low because I was talking. I didn't want it to boil over. I think this is a good time for question period now. If anybody has any questions for me that pertain to making formulas or what I've been talking about today, if you ask me something else, I might be able to answer you, but I might not too. So please go ahead. Just a minute, I have to get the hard stuff here. I'm telling you, it's a tough day when I'm drinking this at this early in the morning. Go ahead, anybody have any questions? Don't be, don't be fear for your life, it's okay. No one have any questions today? Okay. Oh, Wanda, it's Shawnee here. Yes, yeah, Shawnee. Um, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear when you were naming the third dye color in the mustard. It's brilliant green, but it's all going to be written up for you, Shawnee. Okay. All right. Yeah. We can rely on that, but that's what it was. Uh, but okay. you know what? I think I put I think I put moss green in here, not brilliant actually. So <laughs> yeah, I did. So I, I just disobeyed my own formula. So good thing you caught me on that. <laughs> I might have just written that. But you're um it mightn't have been that much different. It would have been greener. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna put a lid on this because we're waiting on um chocolate brown is is um from the yellow family. So we're waiting on that. And I'm just going to put a lid on it to increase the heat. Morning, Wanda, may I ask a question? Please do. I can hardly hear you guys. So I'm going to turn my volume up a little bit. Please excuse me for having to do that. I, I, and I don't even know where the volume is. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> okay, there we go. It, it's Megan speaking. Good morning. I, Good morning, I'm, Megan. I'm just checking in about my pink for my pink house, which I haven't started to dye. But yes. my, I, and I'm wondering if I, if you can remember, and if I could ask you, I'm thinking I start with red violet and a little bit of black. Um, it's not a bright, like it's a bubble gum pink primarily. Right. What, what black does to pink, even at the least amount. Yeah. Like 
I'm, I'm deciphering this in my own mind right now because I have a good visual remembrance of the pink. Great. Um, <clears throat> I think it's actually, I would add the smallest amount of orange and I would also add a little bit of brown instead of black. Okay. Because although it's not bright, um, it's not blackened either. If you, if you understand what I'm saying. Well, maybe you're, it's, it's not deadened. It's not it, deadened. It's warm, isn't it? Yeah, I find it leaning. Like I myself were, if we were to cut this down, like by, so just use a tablespoon of it. Yeah. We'd probably be getting pretty close to what it is, I would think. Okay. But it will be too bright and you would need to add a little bit of brown to it to uh, make it duller. Because I think it would be too bright as it is. Okay, and the second color, like red, violet, orange, and brown, did I remember that correctly? Yeah, but, um, sorry, I had steam in my face. I would, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not whipping you. Um, I, yeah, it has to be chocolate. It can't be any of the other browns. Okay. okay. But I will analyze that today, but Megan, you're going to have to send me an email because I right. can't remember anything right now. Should I put it in the in this die class or in the Thursday class? You can put it. Uh, don't put it in Thursday class. Uh, um, put it in this class. You can ask because I just gave you permission to. I normally don't like to do that, but it's okay because it is. I think it's very related to this formula. So you're getting away with murder because of that. <laughs> I'll be good for the rest of the day. Pardon me. I'll be good for the rest of the day. Girl, you better polish up that. Um, halo, that's what you better do. <laughs> Thank you, Wanda. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any questions today? I do, Wanda. It's Michelle. Hi, um, Michelle. How are you? Thanks. Um, I'm having some trouble with white core, and I'm having trouble pinning down the reason for it. I sometimes just need to hang myself. Like I am such a careful dyer and I still get it. And I've been dying for so long and you have too, probably. No, I'm a newbie. You're a newbie? I'm a okay. it, it's a It's a really irritating problem because you'll do everything right and it will still happen. So one of the things I try to be careful about, I, I will sometimes get a bolt and that's all that bolt will do. Um, and even though I give it a test or whatever, it's still wool and it shouldn't be acting that way, but it is. And I'm doing everything I should. So one great tip I got a little while ago was when I'm having that specific problem with a certain bolt of wool, I make sure that the water that I'm soaking the wool in and the water I'm putting it into the pot in is the same temperature. And I really stir a lot at the beginning. So when I do wandering, for instance, it just naturally has a core of the first color. That's the way it works. Um, and if I do a really dark color sometimes and I don't have enough salt, I'll end up having it really show up. Um, and I don't mind that in my work, but mostly we don't want to have white core. It's not something we're seeking, you know, especially if you have to sell wool and somebody's ripping it and then there's like, whoa, wow. And it seems to me, um, I, I'm just being suspicious, but it seems to me the, the wool is different. Like sometimes I'll dry it and it will come out all wrinkly. Like why, why? I still can't figure that one out. Um, so you just kind of have to mark your bolt and then be really careful when you're using that bolt that you're having this water and that water the same temperature when you're putting them in, if you're having white core. So the other thing that can cause it is um, you've added salt and it's all depending on what people's water additives are too. Like maybe there's um, salt in your water that is so much that it's making the dye stripe on the outside right away and not being able to penetrate. Um, it could be that your, your pot for whatever purpose you have, like, you know, I'm rolling this at the highest possible boil, but it could be that for your water and your um, area that you can't have, uh, will add it to a boiling pot. You know, you just kind of have to feel it out through process of elimination. So I'd look at times I add the acid um, and I add acid way too soon when I'm doing this. Um, you would maybe want to make 20 minutes before you added acid, that helps. Stirring helps if you want a smooth result. If you don't, it doesn't help. Um, and if it's really bad at your house, 
with almost everything you're trying to do, you might want to just start dyeing over already dyed wool. Like if you're under pressure and need to um, have a certain amount of uh, wool dyed or something, that happens to me sometimes. So yeah, and the thing about white core too, it doesn't show up in the first, second, third value. It's in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth value it starts to show up. So you can still make lights out of that bolt too. Right. So I don't know if that was helpful or not, but it was. Thanks. It's, it's, pardon? I I just wondered. Sorry, if you do you put it through the washer and dryer after you've dyed it? I certainly do. Okay. A lot of people don't, and I don't understand that because um, it gets nicely folded and everything. Right. So I always do. I I dye so much. Like I would. What what, what would I be doing with it? I mean, where would I put it? Because I'll die, I'll sometimes die maybe if I'm really getting going and maybe not now that I'm 60, but before, you know, in my 50s, I would die maybe 45 yards in a day of all different colors. So um, how can I, you know, I have to use my washer and dryer. And right. I do think it really helps it to dry it in the dryer. Um, I do want to tell people not to use liquid fabric softener though. Um, because there's something in it that can make dye chased out. Uh, and you don't want that. Nobody wants that. Okay. For for certain. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. Some days the stuff here just takes up like nobody's business. And today is just taking so long because I wanted to do another formula called the sun rises and also sets. So what I'm gonna do is something that I would often do at home. I've had acid in here and there's, because I used orange and a lot of it, you know, I have a little residual um, yellow. So I'm just gonna start my formula with that in there. I'm gonna let that be. This color here really reminds me of um, parts that you would see on a golden lab. Not the shiny parts, but the parts that are more um, subtly colored. Anyway, enough of my musings. Let's get on to the sun rises and also sets. And this time I'm gonna do what I had said before. And I'm gonna add colors one at a time rather than the formula. So I'm gonna pop this in and we'll see right away, it'll turn mildly yellowish. So that's gonna influence my colors that I chose because that's kind of opposite of those colors. All right, so here's my first color is gonna be, I'm gonna dry my hands. If you don't dry your hands and have pretty wet hands, when you open up your dye jar, you know, there's always dye coming out of it. We can't see it necessarily, but if your hands wet, you sure will see it because those little particles will go on your hands. And I used to start off this by having my cloth down here. Now I used it in some dye experiments because I didn't have enough wet wool. So, um, but I really recommend that you just have an old beater piece of wool here that you always have below your thing and it'll catch all that if it's wet and it'll just draw the dye right to it, not from your hand, but it'll keep all those particles grounded. So I am gonna add 256 of blue, but because I have yellow in there, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add one 128 because I, oh, I have a one 128 spoon here. How oh, luxurious. All right. Cause I need to sort of, you know, I want this to be subtle, but um, I need to surmount this yellow that I have in here now, which actually I wanna show this to you because it's quite lovely. Like look how gorgeous that is. That's another, I would throw that over there, but unfortunately I only had two yards of wool here today. So, or sorry, one yard of wool. <clears throat> Normally I'd just say, I want that. So I'm just gonna pour this over top in kind of a pseudo wandering way, but I'm gonna move it around a little bit more than I ordinarily would. Oops. And I'm gonna flip it over now. Blue takes like seconds to take up. It's already taken up. I unplug myself too in my graceful way. So now I'm gonna add, um, dang, now I'm gonna have to watch my own video. Nothing's more depressing than that to get these measurements. But now I'm gonna add blue-violet. Blue-violet's a pretty dark color and I'm getting a nice 
thing happening here in my pot. So I don't want this blue violet to be too dark. So I'm just gonna really take it easy on the amount I add of blue violet. So I probably added the real measurement I wanna do to 256. Now you can see that it's this value in here, but I wanna lighten it up even more. Let me explain this. So you can see how much lighter it is by two values. So my pot is hot. So wherever I pour this, it will stay. So when people say they get big splotches on their wool, it's because um, they didn't, weren't careful to see the value of it. And when you just pour something dark on there, well, hello, you get a dark splotch because already this is taken up because it's light, it's not overwhelming what I already did. So you wanna be careful, you wanna be mindful of um, what you're pouring in over top of something. See, it's already taken up. So now I wanna add just a teeny bit of turquoise. I like to kind of call this fake wandering. And I'm not gonna add very much turquoise at all because it also can be really um, shiny, meaning overwhelming, <laughs> tension attract attracting. So when I hold this up, I see some areas that don't have too much dye on it. They're kind of yellowish, but I like that. I like that gleaming yellow coming through because that is actually something that does happen at night in the morning. So I'm just gonna pour that over and that's it. That's it. So let's see how this guy's doing. He's a very, he's a very dull mustard indeed, but that's okay. This almost looks like door um, tan, which is a good thing to know. I, I love it quite a bit when I accidentally replicate one of their wools <laughs> because then you don't need to buy that color if it's something you like to dye over. So there we go. I'll just wait for this to take up. It's probably already taken up by now. No, not quite. Does anybody else have any other questions about making formulas? Do you feel like you might want to do it or do you feel encouraged or you feel like, oh my, I never want to do that. Oh, Catherine here, you know, I'll, I'll go for it. Cause <laughs> I love, I love to try things out. So it's good. Um, Catherine, do you think you'll try out the two formula challenge? Yeah. So, okay. so basically that is make a, use a formula or make one up and dye the wool. And then no, you can do it all at once. Like what I mix was just put it all in this, the two formulas okay. and then, yeah. Or you oh, yeah. can do it one at a time. Like I just did with these ones. You can do both yeah. and compare them because that's also interesting. I'll probably, yeah, I'll probably right. do both. I'll do everything. Don't worry. I love uh, to do <laughs> I'll do everything. I do well, like that. I, mean, I do. And I have to comment, you know, I drying the I this last batch of wool I got is is from Pendleton is a little bit thinner than the, the previous batch I got from them, but drying it in the dryer really, really helps. And yeah, before and I didn't do that, really, I just hung it up on the rack, but really yeah. drying it in the dryer is important. I have I have requests when I order wool and I ask for the thinnest wool they have. Um, and, and my wool is not thin at the end of it all, but it make it's so much easier to dye. And that's something else too, Michelle, that I just thought of. Mm. Sometimes the wool has been too full and it almost seems as though it went through the process too violently because they put it through these, you know, those gripper strips we have on the edges of our frames. So those are on a big drum and they roll the wool through that and it fluffs it all up, right? That's why it has this nice um, soft texture on it. But sometimes I think it's gone through there or too much or too long or too heavily or something. And I wonder if that doesn't interfere with these things too. So well, that and, and when they make it like with yarn, there could be spinning oil on it. Would there be anything off the bolt you think was wolf? Well, fat? normally when we use Synthropol, it's actual job is a scourer. Right, okay, yeah. Water wetter right. than wet. So anything that was on there, it's it's a preparation for pre-dyeing that it removes all of that kind of stuff. Right. So it shouldn't have been anything that was coated on the outside. Um, can I ask who's that, whose wool it was and where it came from? Um, this I just got from Ingrid Hieronymus, so it's store wool. Yeah. Um, and it's, um, yeah, and, and I've tried, well, I've tried almost scientifically, except I changed two variables at a time, so then I can't pin it down. I and know. It, See, just try going through and changing one thing. Right. And you just 
to die like one thirty second. It happens with the smallest amount of wool is the same as the largest amount of wool. So that would really help you, you know, get down to the nitty gritty. Like what is right. actually causing this? And I have to say, like, I don't know whether you live in the country or this town or are you on well water or? Yes, it's a well. Yeah, so I don't really believe that um, it changes color per se, but um, I would go through and just hyper clean all of my utensils and um, make sure that like before I started any of my experiments that you're starting very scientifically, like just make sure everything's super clean, that um, you don't have any residual anything in there. Like sometimes like I came in here and let me tell you, I had a real growth going on in this pot because I hadn't been here since last week, I think, or maybe it might've been the week before. I don't even remember, but let me tell you, I was growing some stuff in here. And then in turn, it pitted my pot a little bit um, because there was still acid left in there. And sometimes we can do that without even knowing. And that acid would create a quick grab. So, and that means it doesn't okay. go through to the other. So it, it can just be the thickness. And the other thing is like, I can't impress upon people enough that you can use a proper wetting agent. So lots of times in the past, people had us just use dish soap um, and things like that. And then it had to soak overnight. And I mean, it, dish soap isn't meant to do that. Um, you can use jet dry. You can use a cheap single purpose shampoo, like not one with conditioner in it. And it doesn't even have to be an expensive one. The cheaper it is actually, the better it is. Um, or you can get Simple Paul, which works beautifully. Um, we, we don't, and make sure when you get jet dry, there's no additives in it either. Um, and it just takes a minute to soak the wool, but you have to make sure that you, you know, moved it around a little bit. Like you'll see me, like when I go, I, dipping it up and down and wringing it out a little bit, I'm forcing the water through. And so that can be part of it too. Like it might not be wet all the way through to the middle. I'm sure you're doing everything right though, because I do, and it still happens to me sometimes. Right, yeah, I've got, I use Synthropol. I have soaked it overnight even, and I've yeah. tried it in hot water and I've tried everything that I've picked up. And what I wondered too is if you get, and sometimes it's not pure white at the core, it's just paler than the outside <laughs> layer. Yeah, I like to call it the hint of color. Um, yeah. yeah. And so that's has something to do with your heat and your acid levels. So I would definitely look at how the temperature of your uh, soaking water and the temperature of your water in your pot, try to keep them equal. Okay. And I just got a Presto pot. So I'm really excited to, to do that, to use it and to try your talent. I just want to that's die good. all day, every day. I know it's so fun and it's easy too, because you don't have to take out all of this stuff, but uh, I think it was, um, I can't rightly remember what we did last, but anyway, when I did yellows, I went into my desk to download the video and it boiled over. And so one of the, one of the claws in that was me just cleaning that up and it made a really nice piece of wool. I mean, we just have to be adaptable, don't we, Michelle? <laughs> yeah. Well, so, and if you, if you get a piece with white core, it, yeah. can you fix it? So sometimes what I do, it depends on, um, whether I like that color of that wool or I don't care for it. If I really love it and I think it's beautiful, I cut it up and I put in like a medium dye that goes with it and won't take away from what's happening with it. So then that at least goes up to medium and it isn't like value three against value eight where it's like really okay. glaringly apparent. And that helps because all the edges will get dyed and you won't right. have to worry about it so much. So I've done that. I've also just re-dyed it. I had a piece a few, like maybe a couple of months ago where it was, uh, I call it overcasting when the dye just catches on the outside, it doesn't go all the way through. And sometimes I make that happen on purpose, but it, it was just an overcasted piece. And I decided like, it doesn't look very nice. And I, you're able to over dye it and make it beautiful with no white core, with no problem. But of course, every time we add dye, right? Things get darker. Right. So yeah. But okay, thank you. just keep working at this problem and try to look at it. I would, I would really start at my, like get everything clean and change one thing, like just change your temperature first. Okay, thank and you. If that helps. Yeah, and Thanks slowly but surely you're going to nail it. And then probably the next bolt you get won't even be doing that. Right. Yeah. It's, God, I hope so. it's a real uh, lottery. Yeah. 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 So Could I ask Michelle what size uh, Presto pot she bought? 
Oh, I think it's the six cord. It's not the huge one. It was the $90 one, like the $89 one. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, I just find them like I wouldn't be able to have this dye show if I didn't have these. And I can take no. these when I'm going to teach and I can just let them um, be in my car. I have all my dyes inside and I can just dye in an instant. It's like amazing. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody brings wool and it's not quite the right color they thought it was going to be, I just like whoosh, put it in the pot. That's <laughs> so good. And it makes us, um, it makes dyeing so much more accessible for us. Yeah, especially if you don't have to be a cereal dyer like me. So I want to show you that beautiful little, um, the sun also rises and sets. So one of the reasons it's so attractive is because I did use that little bit of yellow in there. You can see how nice that is. Mm -hmm. Clouds lit by light, right? Mm -hmm. Can you, yeah. um, I can't see it because someone else is talking. <laughs> Okay, so now you're talking. So I'll just show it up close and we can all, I'll just jimmer jammer a little bit so that nobody's talking. See, it's quite lovely. But if people needed clouds that were lit by the rising sun, you can't really see all that good, but you'll be able to see it in the photo. Okay? So is everybody good? And remember that um, for all your colorful needs, you should come to WandaWorks and please join the welcome mat. It's imperative that I have subscribers to keep this continuing. Um, you can try it out for a month or you can join for a year. That's a big bargain to join for a year. And um, every week I'm doing things to help you understand more about color and creativity. Any, any questions, anybody? You're good? All right. Let's call. Oh, go Thank ahead. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you are you. so welcome. Thank, Thank you for Thank coming. You, Wanda. And we will see you soon next week. Great. Bye. Thank you.